Now in this part of the video, we're gonna install the crucial 500 gigabyte NVMe M.2 solid state drives inside the TVS 672 XT. On the back, we've got, we got one, two, three screws to remove. Three, should be able to lift this up now. back. Okay. It's like opening up a PC case. It seems to be right underneath this board. And the way this board is screwed in is that the screws are on the opposite side. I'm going to get in there. And if you can see here, there's two CPU fans and a pretty large heat sink. It would have been nice if they actually put the M.2 drives on the outside. Make it a little bit easier to install. All right, the first thing we'll do is put the heat sinks on the SSD. So it comes with two. We'll put this one right here. Just take off the sticky tape and stick that right on here. And I looked inside and the notch, according to this, is on the top right. So we've got one. And the other one is right here. And number two. There we go. Put these down here so it doesn't fall in. There's these little uh, notches that we need to move out. So I already pulled on that one. And then the other lock is right here. And I'll be careful with. So the first one is right here. I already put that out the way, and the second one is this one. And I'll just carefully pull that one out. Now the smart thing to do would be to remove the Thunderbolt PCI adapter, which is right here. The challenge is, is that, the, I don't know who designed this, but the screw is right there and uh, it's hard to access because, or get to, because this power supply is in the way. So I can't unscrew this PCI slot unless I have some sort of right angle of screwdriver. And see if I can reach in and install one of these drives. I haven't seen any videos on this and I can see why, because it's kind of hard to film. So you see how that's slotted in there. The next thing I have to do is just push it down and it should snap in. Let's get that in there and push this down. And it doesn't snap in, you have to actually push the plastic slot in. This is really hard with just one hand. I feel like I'm playing operation. There we go. Okay, first one in. Okay, now for the second one. Sorry, my iPhone, my iPhone's not focusing, so I'll just try to do it like this. There we go. I think I got it in the slot. Start pushing this down. See if it'll focus. There we go. Okay, it looks like it's in. I just have to lock it in place. Why can't they just make it snap like regular M.2 slots? 
or even make it so that the PCI slot is easier to install. Or even better yet, put these on the outside. This is really hard. Okay. There. I think I got those slotted in. Now, that doesn't look like it's all the way in, so I'm going to try to push it in a little bit more. There you go. Do the same thing with this one. Okay. All right, that completes the SSD install. And now let's go ahead and put the case back on. Actually, before I screw everything together, I'll double check to see if there's connectivity. So let's plug in the ethernet cable and then the power cable. Power it on. All right, while that's booting up and we have this open, let's check out the thermals. Okay, over here is the power supply. This is the Thunderbolt right here. And let's see if we can see the M.2. drives. All right, let's see if we can get in here. Is this thing booted up yet? System boot completed. Thank you. All right, we can see it's got two SSD. So here we can select accelerating performance with SSD cache. SSD cache is data on a high-speed SSD to improve access performance. To use this feature, at least one SSD must be installed in an NAS. All right. Okay, so these caches are on a high-speed SSD, improved performance of read access, write access, or both. With read cache, the system copies data to the SSDs so that it can be read faster in the future. With the write cache, the system writes incoming data to the SSDs first, then flushes it to regular storage later. To improve large file sequential access such as video streaming, the ratio of SSDs to HS H hard drives in the NAS should be at least 1 to 3, or you should use PCI SSDs. All right. Let's go over here. And I wonder. Let's do that. And let's do. Okay, maybe I'll select one. Let's do RAID 0. And we'll do read write and RAID 0. And with RAID 0, it's selected with two or more disks are available and allows the disk capacity to be used. So it'll be one terabyte, um, but doesn't provide any disk failure, which is fine. And RAID 0 is the highest read-write performance, but is generally not recommended. That's okay, because this is going to be for cache. And uh, let's just take a look at this. Write-only cache can be created using PCI SSDs to further increase SSD storage performance. I'm curious. I wonder if I set what would be faster, setting one of these to read and the other to write, and have those dedicated, or have RAID 0 and do a read-write. Hmm. I like the total capacity of one terabyte, so we'll just go ahead and do that. Okay, I agree. Customize SSD cache settings to, to optimize performance. 
Reserve space on the SSD to improve write performance and disk span. To find the optimal over provisioning ratio for your SSD, run SSD profiling tool. Okay. Okay, so I did a little bit of homework and went and uh, looked at what SSD extra over provisioning is. And based off what I watched and in my use case, since I'm doing a little bit, I'm doing quite a bit of multimedia and video. I'm going to choose the read write at RAID 0 so I have the capacity and I'll go next and I'll do over provisioning at 30%. Essentially what this does is that it allows you to reserve more space on the SSD in addition to the amount of specified by the manufacturer. Over provisioning ensures the performance and endurance of SSDs and helps meet the demands of write intensive operations. Note, you cannot test over provisioning or increase the percentage once the RAID group is created. And uh, so I'll do all IO, which is recommended for file serving and media streaming. Let me check out the advanced settings. Uh, least frequently used. Okay, yep, that looks good. And let's go, and I skipped the test because I just watched the video and made my own assumption and 30% would be pretty good. And with the over provisioning, the actual cache capacity is 632 gigabytes. Now, I don't think I'll be transferring that large of files. Um, you know, most of my videos are about four to 10 gigabytes in size. So uh, with the over provisioning, I'm fine with this capacity. Select the SSD cache, deselect it. So we'll select this as the static volume. Oh, select, select to enable SSD cache. Okay. And we've got two disks selected and the estimated capacity is 900 gigabytes and the cache capacity with over provisioning. Subtracting that will equal 632 and the cache mode is all IO and the cache replacement policy is least recently used. And let's create that. When creating an SSD cache, all of the existing data will be erased. That's fine. And before removing the SSD from the NAS, you must disable and remove the SSD cache function from the administration page and wait for the data to be flushed to the disk. Removing an SSD while the SSD cache is active will lead to data loss even when the NAS power is off. Makes perfect sense. Let's go ahead and get that created. And cache acceleration. Uh, why is that not on? Oh, cache type not supported. Interesting. Is it still being created? Okay, so you can see that is currently initializing. Okay, it didn't take that long. It looks like it took about two minutes or so. And now that it's available, the cache is on. Let's go ahead and do some additional testing here. Close this out. Switch over to my finder. Let me turn off the Wi-Fi. Plug in my 10 gig E adapter. Okay. And so my 10 gig E is now attached. Let's go to my Thunderbolt connection here, go to public, and let's do a read test. Go to my desktop and I'll remove that video that I had earlier. Empty trash. And let's copy this over. And so the way cache works is that first it needs to fill the cache. So as soon as I copy this, and uh, let's actually get my video on here or my stopwatch so we're going to read from the thunderbolt read that 5.23 gigabyte file copy and go to the desktop and command v and that took 8.52 seconds i'll delete it let's do it again go over here command v and it was six seconds this time. All right, so let's try 
on the 10 gig E network. Let's do the same read test. Copy, go over here, reset the clock and command V. That's about six seconds as well. And let's just remove that. I'll copy it again just for the second test. Reset it, Command V. And that's 5.95, very negligible. Now let's write back to it. Let's delete it from the drive just using the 10 gig E. Copy it from the desktop, navigate over here, and Command V. It took 11 seconds to write. Let's delete that again. Copy it from the desktop. Go back here, reset, Command V. And it took eight seconds, almost nine. So it was a few seconds faster. Let's switch over to Thunderbolt, delete it from this folder, copy it from the desktop, and we're gonna write it to this folder using Thunderbolt. Reset that, Command V. That took nine seconds. Let's delete it, copy it one more time, reset this, and Command V and about 9.56, so it's pretty negligible. I'll throw the results on a chart and we'll see what those look like. This is a test using the Blackmagic speed test and the Thunderbolt connection. Stop that, now let's select it via, and this is via the 10 gig E connection. Yeah, 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 yeah.